Hello and welcome to Console Accessories and on today's video we're going to be looking at this. It's the Geekling wireless controller for N-Switch as most things that aren't, that aren't licensed have to be called N-Switch and PC and Android. And as you can tell from the from the title and from the thumbnail and from this as well it's kind of like a modular design so what I'm going to do is I've played about this for a couple of days so I'm, I've reboxed it to show you what the unboxing's like and I'm going to show you what I think of it. There's a few advantages but if you stick around there's a fair few disadvantages and I want to highlight something that I've noticed uh, from where I bought it. Okay so there's the front again with a blinking sticker as most of these things if the sticker if you try and pull it off it takes the whole of the box off so we won't we won't do that and then the side a bit of blue and the red there we go it shows you the four configurations that you can have it and on the back support playing games on multiple game platform such as n-switch android phone tablet smart tv tv box windows pc with gyroscope access function high sensitivity buttons and bring you the high-end gaming experience removable interchangeable buttons players can set to follow their habits. Remapping buttons on the back of the gamepad can be customised according to the needs of the game and with turbo function. Made in China. Okay, so enough of the um, poorly translated English on the back. Let's crack into it. And what you do is when you open it up, you come up with this and some instructions. Instructions are nice, all different languages. I had to actually have to use them because there was a few things I needed to, to learn. So you can get this, read that, and then put it to one side. Okay, here it is. First thing, you get yourself a nice USB-C cable, which is always a good thing. Always nice that they include one of these. They're probably cheap enough to put in anyway, so I can't see why anything wouldn't include a USB-C cable. Okay, so here it is. Now, first things first, you notice it's quite, it's, it looks quite nice. It's on point with the with the blue and the red. That's nice. It's not not a bad match by any stretch. That's not a bad match at all. Yeah, so that's good. I know a lot of accessories I've had when they've tried to match the blue and the red, they've been way off, so it doesn't quite work. But this is this is this is a good match. And here as well, if you look under the thumbsticks, there's the blue and the red there to match, which is nice. It kind of just also highlights the fact that this is your right stick and this is your this is your left stick okay so first impressions look really good it looks the business anyway it looks like a nice controller i've got my pro controller here i'm not going to compare it to the pro controller for terms of like functions and build quality and stuff because well for one this is twice as much so it would be unfair and this is pretty much perfect so you, you're never going to be able to beat this so i don't think i'm going to compare it. i'm just going to be using it for things like size and things like that okay so, as you can see, it's almost identical in size. The grips here are slightly fatter, so that is wider than that, okay, which does help, but that's about it. And the grip, the buttons there, so let's go into the close-up, see if we can get the close-up of this. The buttons there, the triggers, they're a little bit bigger as well, not the top ones so much, the main ones here. Okay, but apart from that, relatively the same size the main functions the one about this and as you as we've we've hinted to before is the fact that it's a modular design so I'll, I'll crack straight into that and what you do is there's a little thing that says open there and there's a little slot so you stick your fingernail in it and you ping it up like that. and on the back here it's got some magnets so there's one two three four five six seven magnets and they quite cleverly magnetise themselves to the screws that are used to hold the controller together which is really nice so when you take this face plate off you've got some kind of like some mini instructions almost there kind of see open I don't know if you can see that very well or not it says kind of that's the way you open it so you have to kind of turn it the way it says and then there's this I've absolutely no idea what that is but that's like a hole but there's, there seems to be like a little bit of some grips on the side of it I don't, I'm not sure what that is Anywho, so what you do is you have to get each one of these, push it in and turn it. So if you can see there, it says open, so there's like a slot there. So if I turn it and I can pull this out. 
So if you have a look on the top here, there's, there's ridges all the way around, apart from this one, and there's like an indicator. So that line needs to line up with this, and then you open it that way, or line it up with that and close it that way. Okay? So where's, your, where's the line? The line is there. So line it up with the open bit and slide it to closed. So you put it in there like that and then you slide it to close and it kind of almost clicks in. You can't put it in any other way. It won't fit. It won't fit any other way. You get that indicator, you put it onto the open bit and slide it in and it kind of clicks, clicks in. And that's with all of them. So exactly the same for this one. So you kind of push it down a bit and click it and that's open. And then you can take it out. When you want to put it back, you get the little indicator onto there, push it in and slide it to the, the locked position. So the idea is you can take that one out and that one out, that one out and that one out. And then you can put them different configurations. So you can put this one back in there and this one back in there and this one back in there and this one back in there. So you can have it asymmetrical or symmetrical, but you can have it asymmetrical that way if you want it, but that's really bizarre. That's really bizarre because who has the muscle memory for that? No other controller has that. So it would be either the kind of like the PS4 way, should we call it? The PS4 way where the two buttons are there and your buttons and your D-pad are either side, or you'd have it as the kind of the Xbox way as we'll call it which is the asymmetrical way like that and this faceplate goes on there that's a light on there so the faceplate lights up so it looks quite nice um, so here's my first negative of this thing on here I have no idea why it says A, B, C and D I, I guess that's to indicate for the instructions maybe it says move point A and point B and so but why is it on top of the faceplate? It just just makes it look, just make it cleaner by getting rid of that. Why couldn't that A, B, C and D have been put underneath the faceplate like it was with the, the open button? I'm not quite sure. There's no need for it to be on there. Okay, and you see on the top there is a USB-C, so I've got one here, and when you plug it in, this lights up, which is nice, and those flashing there means that it's charging, and when they stop flashing, that means it's fully charged. And all you do to pair it to a Nintendo Switch is you hold down the home, turn it on, and on another back you have Switch or Android, you press the Switch button, and it syncs up without doing anything. So we've got the modular, and then on the back here we've got this. I'll show you that in a second. So you just take that out. And then on the back here you have some triggers, which are really nice, okay? So we've got four triggers. I have a Power A controller here, which is officially licensed. And these are the triggers for that. Now there's only two on there, but they're really good. They're really nice and clicky, those triggers. They're really good. They're, they're, they're in a nice position. Whereas this one, it's even better because they're nice and big. And there's four of them as well. So if you want to, you can have one, two, three, and four triggers all, all programmed to any of the face buttons. So that's really nice. So this bit that I've pinged off there, that does, that go, that just clips onto here. Like that. And then you've got yourself a kind of white thing for like for beat and stuff. You can you can slide around, but if you do that too much, it comes off. Okay, so that's a, that's a nice little feature. This it's not great. I'll be honest with you. It is magnetised on there, but it doesn't take much to take it off. Not brilliant. And then it has a turbo function, so you can like instead of just hammering A, you press the turbo button and press A, and then you just need to hold it down and it hammers it for you. So that's nice. In terms of weight, it's 217 grams. So if you've got, I'll compare it to this, 247. So it's quite a quite a bit lighter, probably because of the stuff, the the, the, um, the plastic and the things it's made of. Probably it has gyro controls. So if you want. To use it in gyro it does have that and it does have rumble so that's really good and that's another positive but there's um, uh, a few negatives that I want to go through now so there we are the positives out of the way here are your negatives one the modular design 
all well and good. But as with most things like this, once you've found the position that you want, so whether you want it this way or you whether you want to swap, swap these two over for the, for, the, for the PS4 version, are you really gonna change them again? I don't know. I, um, I don't find that I have a specific game where I need a specific layout of my sticks. I think it's things like when you want to customize something, you find something you like and then you just leave it, don't you? So I think I would have it like this and I would leave it. I don't think I'd need to change that anymore. So what's the point of doing that? The only way I can see it is if there's two of you maybe and you are kind of swapping between the two of you and one of you likes the sticks there, one of you likes the sticks there. But that's a bit loose, isn't it? So, um, no, I think the modular design essentially is pointless because you're just going to move it and leave it. And why don't you just buy a controller in the configuration that you like? Okay. And here's another negative as well. The, the whole modular design is the whole point of this. But if you can see here, if I go over here, so this is the, the modular bit. If I press here, look, can you see that? The whole thing moves. It's only about a millimeter or two but the whole thing moves. So when you press the A button, you press the A button, but then you can, it's almost like you've got an, another button behind it. Same with the sticks. Go with the stick here. If I show you this, look, the whole thing moves. Because it's all sprung loaded because you need to spring it to get it out. You can pull the stick that way, and then you've got another millimeter, which is, it's a small thing, but it's really quite annoying. So you can pull left and then it's almost like you've got another button left and right and up and down. It's almost, it's, it's not, it's not very nice because these, these bits are too spongy. They're too spongy for me. Another negative. Okay. So we've got left on the D-pad, right on the D-pad, up and down. Okay. So left on the D-pad, I'm going to pull this towards my mic so you can hear this. Left on the D-pad, got that, up on the D-pad, you got that. Now right on the D-pad, you got that. Now down on the D-pad. Okay, ready? I'm gonna go left, up, right, and down. Okay, left, up, right, down. Okay, Whoa. they all click, down doesn't for some reason. I've no idea why. It's probably just a chunky model, I don't know, but anyway. That's another negative that's not great, I'll be honest with you. Okay, so there are all the negatives. And also, I when I, when I bought this, I saw all the reviews on Amazon, and it, all the reviews are four star, most of them are anyway. But all of the reviews have a video or images attached to them, which I thought was a bit odd. And then when you scroll down, you see a couple of reviews that don't have uh, images or videos attached to them, and they're negative reviews for the same reasons that I've given these negative negatives here. Now take that what you want, but I would no way be giving this a four star review. I, I pay for this out of my own money, okay? I didn't get given this, I paid for this, and there's no way I would be giving this four or five stars. I'd given it three at best, maybe two, because I couldn't live with it. These are too, these are too spongy. The D-pad doesn't work, and also as well, look as well, look at the size of these buttons. I mean, they're tiny. It has to be, because it has to fit in there, so you know why they are, but they are tiny. So, if I kind of line that up, the top of the X with the top of the X on that one, it only goes down to about there. So it's almost kind of three quarters the size. Now, with my adult hands, with any controller, so where's the Power A one gone there? Any call, this is, this is only 30 pounds, this one. Nice big buttons. These are tiny, not very good. So they're tight. So I don't know why these people are, no, I'll rephrase that. I know exactly why they're giving them um, five star reviews, but I would feel bad about giving this a five star review because I just don't think it's good enough. There's, there are some redeeming features of this don't think it's worth five stars because of this sponginess here, because of the tiny buttons there, because of the non-clicking there. But it does redeem itself for the things like this. I just think if you've got 25 quid or you've got $30, you could do a whole heap better than this. Um, okay, so 
I think I've slated it enough. Let me know, let me know your thoughts. Did you, have you got one of these? Do you, do you like the, the modular design? I mean, there's, there's people out there that have got the Astro C40. Um, there's no way you can compare that to this one because the Astro 40 it works really well and there's software for it and it actually doesn't spongy and it's all the size and it's nice. So it's kind of just kind of trying to ride on the back of the, the popularity of that one. But for 25 quid, so what can you expect for $30? What can you expect? But if you do look around, there are controllers out there for $20, $25, $30 that do a much better job of being a, a cheaper pro controller replacement. Okay, so let me know your thoughts. Have you got one of these? Thinking about picking one up? Yeah, ask, ask me a question below what I think what I think about this and whether I think you should pick it up or not. Um, okay. So let me know anything below, anything comments or anything like that, do let me know. Any questions you've got about it, I'll happily answer them. And do give a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new around here. That'd be really appreciated. Okay, so that's my honest look at the Geeklin wireless controller for the Nintendo Switch. Until next video, bye-bye.